And we are in perilous times in this nation and in the church. And God is calling His people to stand up, to arise and shine, let your light shine, to become salt and light. I hate to think of the alternative. You are the salt of the earth, but when salt becomes useless and is trodden underfoot by men, We will either be salt and light, or we will be trodden underfoot by men. Make no mistake, the fence-walking days are nearly over for the church. We will no longer have a time when we are allotted a decision. We will be made to make a decision. This is right now in this country. We have known such great blessing. What we consider normal is not normal throughout the world. We have known safety. We may not know safety. We are in such a place. But God, in His wonderful mercy, He sets aside a time, an appointed time. He appoints time so that His people can be refreshed. I was talking to my wife, and, and she said, how, how God must feel that He must re revive his people when he's given so much. When he's given so much. And yet, his mercy is never end. Just think about, think about the blessings that you've been able to enjoy. Have you ever gone to bed hungry? Have you ever, I mean really hungry? Have you ever had to live for year after year without electricity? year after year without clean and safe water to drink. Have you ever had that? See, we take these things for granted. And God has blessed us in this country. And we have done exactly what the Israelis did. When God blessed them, they forgot that it was Him. And they begin not to fear Him. What have we lost in this country? We have lost the fear of God. Not only have we lost it in the culture, but we've lost it in the church, and that saddens me to no end. And God, as He always does, He's come to make an adjustment. I'd like you to turn to uh, Ezekiel 37. Very familiar, very familiar passage of Scripture. The dry bones. The dry bones. Ezekiel was a son of a priest in captivity in Babylon. And Ezekiel was kind of a strange guy. I've done some strange things, but I haven't done <laughs> like Ezekiel. But Ezekiel went out in the spirit, and this is the, the words from the Lord. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out in the spirit of the Lord, and set me down in a valley and it was full of bones. Then he caused me to pass by them all around, and behold, there were very many in an open valley. And indeed, they were very dry. And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? I, I love what Ezekiel said. 
And I answered, O oh Lord, you know. Ezekiel knew that God was God and dead wasn't dead when it comes into the presence of the Lord. Again he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, O oh, dry bones, listen to this word, hear, hear, hear the word of the Lord. That's all we got to do. We have to hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord to these bones, surely I will cause breath to enter into you and you shall live. I will put sinews on you and bring flesh upon you and cause you with skin, cover you with skin and put breath into you and you shall live. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a noise, suddenly, a rattling. And the bones came together, bone to bone. Indeed, I looked, and sinews and the flesh came upon them, and the skin covered them over. But there was no breath in them. Also, he said to me, prophesy to the breath, and prophesy, son of man, say to the breath, thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded, and breath came into them, and they lived, and they stood upon their feet, an exceedingly great army.
We're from the north, aren't we? From the north. From the north to the south, to the east, to the west. From the north to the south, to the east, to the west. Blow river, blow, blow wind. Blow the river, flow. From the north to the south, to the east, to the west. I walked in the valley, was full of dry bones. Rosa was a mighty army stood upon its feet. It was an army on earth no one could defeat. Cause God is with us. Elohim Adonai. Yahweh. Nothing is impossible. God is with us. Thank you. 
like the morning clouds spread over the mountains. A people come, great and strong, like of whom has never been. Nor will ever be any such after them, even for many successive generations. A fire devours before them, and a flame burns behind them. The land is like the Garden of Eden before them, and behind them a desolate wilderness. Surely nothing shall escape them. Their appearance is like the appearance of horses, and like swift steeds, so they run, with a noise like chariots. Over the mountaintops they leap, like the noise of a flaming fire that devours the stubble, like a strong people set in battle array. Behold, before them the people writhe in pain. All faces are drained of color. They run like mighty men. They climb the walls like men of war. Everyone marches in formation, and they do not break ranks. They do not push one another. Everyone marches in his own column. Though they lunge between the weapons, they are not cut down. They run to and fro in the city. They run on the wall. They climb into the houses. They enter at the windows like a thief. The earth quakes before them, and the heavens tremble, and the sun and the moon grow dark. Where have we heard that? Hmm. The sun and the moon grow dark. And the stars diminish their brightness. And the Lord gives voice before his army. For his camp is very great. For strong is the one who executes his word. For the day of the Lord is great and very terrible. Who can endure it? Do you know, I've heard it said that this was Jesus Christ's army. Not, that is not his army. If you want to read about this army, and just take, take note of this, Habakkuk 1 talks about this army. Revelation 9 and 10 talks about this army. This army is risen up from Iraq. And this army in our day reads in their imam the same scriptural that it's written about them and their imam that they are executing their God's will. Even now, therefore the, said, the Lord says, turn to me with all your heart, with fasting and weeping and with mourning. So rend your heart and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful and slow to anger and of great kindness. And he relents from doing harm. Who knows? if he will turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord your God. This is a personal invitation to each individual in the body of Christ to turn to me with all your heart. And then as a corporate Proclamation: Blow the trumpet in Zion. Consecrate a fast. Call a sacred assembly. Gather the people. Sanctify the congregation. Assemble the elders. Gather the children and the nursing babes. Let the bridegroom go out from his chamber. Let him stop his honeymoon and go to his face on the floor. And the bride from her dressing room 
And let the priest who minister to the Lord weep between the porch and the altar. Let them say, Spare your people, O Lord. Do not give your heritage to reproach that the nation should rule over them. Why should they say among the peoples, Where is your God? Our nation is judged. Do not be confused about this. God has judged our nation. He is giving us time because He is merciful. With His judgment, there is mercy. He sends people to talk and tell of what He is bringing. He is bringing calamity, calamity to the United States of America. To the church unless we repent. Fifty six million innocent babies are slaughtered in this country, murdered, <coughs> torn limb from limb. Do you think a holy God will overlook that? Do you think a holy God will overlook when man defines what marriage is? Do you think? Their blood cries from the grave for justice. And here we are, in this place, at this time. This is our time. Revival is a ripe fruit to fall into your hands. It is here, it is now. Take it. Take it. Grab it. And become alive and stand up and be bold for Jesus Christ. You only have God behind you. Only God. God Almighty, whom happened to have created all your enemies. Only God. Now therefore, says the Lord, turn to me with all your heart, with fasting and weeping and with mourning. Rend your heart and not your garments. Return the Lord your God, for He is merciful, compassionate, free for the taking. Verse 18, then, when? After we do that. The ball's in our court. Then the Lord will be zealous for His land. He will have pity on his people, and he will answer and say to his people, Behold, I send you grain and new wine and oil, and you will be satisfied by them, and I will no longer make you a reproach among the nations, but I will remove from you the northern army, and will drive them away into a barren and desolate land, with his face toward the eastern sea and his back toward the western sea, his stench will come up and his foul order will rise because he has done monstrous things. Fear not, O land, be glad and rejoice. Sounds like revival, doesn't it? For the Lord has done marvelous things. Do not be afraid, you beasts of the field, for the open pastures are springing up and the trees bear its fruit and the fig tree and the vine yield their strength. Be glad, you children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for He has given you the former rain faithfully, and He will cause the rain to come down for you, the former and the latter rain in the first month. The threshing floors will be full of wheat, and the vats shall overflow with new wine and oil. And so I will restore to you the years that the swarming locusts 
has eaten the crawling locust, the consuming locust, the chewing locust, the great army which I sent among you, you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God who has dealt wondrously with you and my people will never, ever, ever, ever be put to shame. Then you will know that I am in the midst of Israel and I am the Lord your God and there is no other. My people shall never be put to shame. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. And also my men servants and my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days and I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood, fire, pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the great and awesome day of the Lord. And it shall come to pass that whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem there shall be deliverance, as the Lord has said, among the remnant who the Lord calls. So here we are. And all we have to do is choose. How can two walk together unless they agree? That's all we have to do is agree. God will do the rest. Agree with God and He will do the rest. Agree with God and He will do the rest. He will empower us to do the rest. How's time? Anybody know? I am here to tell you that revival is here, is now, free for the taking, to whomsoever will. Ask and ye shall receive. Knock and the door shall be open. Just ask. So many misconceptions about what revival is. Revival is for the church. Because the church is the body of Christ. If the body is paralyzed, what can the head do? If the body is paralyzed, what can the head do? Rise up. Stand up. Rise up. Rise up in God. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of my might, no. His might. I am weak, but coming back to your first love, I'm going to read you something. You can have a seat if you like. It's in Revelation. God speaking to one of his churches. Anybody got a got an amplified version? Anybody? No? No? Okay, that's really good in the amplified. Really good. These things says he who holds the seven stars in his right hand, who walks in the midst of the seven golden lampstands, I know your works, your labor and your patience, that you cannot bear those who are evil. You have tested those who say they are apostles and are not, and have not have found them liars. And you have persevered and have patience and have labored for my name's sake and have not become weary. Nevertheless, I have this against you. This one thing, one thing, the most important thing, the only thing that really matters in being a Christian. We were not saved to serve. We were not saved to be Bible scholars. 
We were not saved to be moral policemen. We were saved to love the Lord our God with all our heart, with all our mind, with all our strength, with all our heart. That's it. And if you do that, you'll love your neighbor as you love yourself. Remember that, Dean? Right? Hey, it's a cross. <laughs> it's a cross. Nevertheless, I have against you this one thing. You have left your first love. And you know, we, we can't even get to that place because we get so occupied. We get so occupied in, you know, doing church stuff. Taking food to the food pantry. Teach a Bible study. Do you know where he wants you? He wants you. With him in the secret place. That's exactly. If you go there, you will have eternal life and you will have the abundant life. God even defines eternal life as knowing him. Knowing him. How many times in the Bible? Then you will know that I am your God. You are my people. I am your God. You will know. He wants us to know Him. To know Him. Like He knows us. He knows you. He loves you. He knows how to stir you. He knows how to motivate you. He knows everything about you. He knows you're down, your highs. He knows it all. He knows what he knows your motivation. And he wants to control that motivation. It's such mercy that our country has lasted as long as it has lasted. You are the light of the world. You are a city built on a hill. You are salt of the earth. You are a king and a priest. You are a chosen generation. A generation of priests. In the Old Testament, the priest stood between God and the nation and made intercession. Pastors, teachers, your task is to blow the trumpet in Zion, consecrate a fast, call a sacred assembly, gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children and the nursing babes and the bridegroom from out of the chamber, the bride from her dressing room, let the priest who minister to the Lord, that be us, weep between the porch and the altar. Let them say, spare your people. Judgment must begin in the house of the Lord. And do not give your heritage to reproach. The nation, that the nation should rule over them. And why should they say, among the peoples, where is their God? He is near. He is waiting for us. We are not waiting for Him. He is waiting for us. He is looking all around the world to find someone to intercede for the church and for the nation. Wicked people do what wicked people do. Righteous people should do what righteous people do. He is calling for a holy people. A holy people. A people 
that can show this is what God looks like. He isn't vile. He isn't mean. He's merciful. He's just. He's righteous. He's calling his people to step up. And he will empower if we agree with him. Our deliverer, our rock, the one that we can trust with our very lives. At this time, I, I just want to know if, if people need prayer. There's a lot of people that can pray here. Are there prayer needs? Is there things? Is God making adjustments tonight? That's what I'm asking. Is God making adjustments? What is keeping you from going the route? Is it unforgiveness? Is it bitterness? Is it a habit? Is it Whatever it is, I, I, I believe that the Holy Spirit right now is bringing things to minds in this place. And this isn't a show. This is the body of Christ working together. This whole thing has been the body of Christ working together. There's no showboaters here. Just the body of Christ working together. I, it just blesses my soul when I see Baptists, when I see Pentecostals, when I see, uh, who else we got here? We got any Methodists here? No Methodists? Okay. okay. I, I like the body of Christ. I like it. It's rich and diverse and beautiful. I want lots of Catholics. I want Episcopals. Presbyterians, I like them all. It's so rich and necessary. A house divided cannot stand. That's what the Lord said. I didn't say that. The Lord said it. Make every effort to be in unity with to be in unity with your brothers and your sisters in Christ. And if something threatens that, if something, if, if something severs that, make that a priority. Make that a priority to get that fixed. Sometimes, sometimes the church can be the cruelest place. Anybody ever been hurt in church? I want to see hands. Anybody been hurt in church? Only one. Only one. Sure. <laughs> but I want to tell you something. Usually you're hurt by people that you love. Isn't that amazing? You get hurt the most from people that you love the most. Keep that in mind when someone hurts you. And remember... You probably heard a lot more people unknowing. But God wants us free from all of that. He wants us whole and healthy. So if there's anything that if, if somebody and I has some issue with someone, make that a priority. You don't want anything to hinder us in this hour that we live. Because we are an our you don't have a choice in the matter. You are part of the army. You're in. You may not do anything, but you're in. But that's up to you. I want to I wanna make this last part of my life count for something. I want to end better than I started. I got a little bit of wisdom accumulated through the years. Now I can use what little power I have left to, to do something. 
I just appreciate you all so much. You, you'll never know. You'll never know. And I thank you for coming tonight and supporting me personally. Maybe it just came to be on TV. I don't know. But, um, huh? Oh, for the cake. Oh, the cake for the cake. I remember that. I don't think. Get some more cake. <laughs> Food always works. It always works. Father, we thank you. We thank you for this service. We thank you that you are doing something in the earth today, right now. You're doing something in us. You're stirring something in us. And it doesn't matter if we're old or young or weak or strong. It has nothing to do with that because you are strong. With you is life. With you is impossibilities don't exist with you, Father. All that we have to do is get connected to you and be connected to you like Jesus Jesus would spend hours and hours in prayer in fellowship with you and he would come off the mountain and affect the multitudes and miracles happened in his way, healings and all these things, Father. Just because he was connected with you, he showed us how we can live. And so, Father, empower us. Every time that we agree with you, Father, empower us. Open doors for us. Make us bolder. Help us to stand up. Help us to make a stand. With you, all things are possible. And I thank you for that. I thank you for these dear people. I